Here are three observations from the COVID-19 experience thus far. See if they correspond to yours. The first observation is that of time. More specifically, the relativity of time. My impression for some of the population, maybe more so the older, maybe the adolescents, probably the parents attempting to homeschool for the first time. My impression for some of the population is that it seems to have found these days rather long. Not much to do or watch, no sports, no friends around, no teachers to watch, I mean educate your kids. For some, these have been long days. For others, the days have been fast paced. What did someone say to me the other day, someone who's been dealing with the daily, almost hourly changes from the government? Something like two weeks ago seems like a year with as much as been crammed into these days. For some, it's been fast paced. Maybe for a few, life hasn't changed much. The job's the same, fortunately. Free time's the same. Life's more or less the same. The first observation is the relativity of time. Einstein put it this way. He said, sit with a pretty girl for an hour, and that hour will seem shorter than any minute. Put your hand on a hot iron for a fraction of a minute, and that will seem longer than any hour. And there's the relativity of time. Time, sequential time, one moment after the next, is not absolute. It's not inviolable. It can be influenced by other forces. Here's the second observation, that of routine or ritual. I think many people whose schedules have changed have felt the value, the necessity of routine or daily ritual to help put you in touch with the good or assist you in reaching a goal. Lacking that inertia, stagnation and frustration do seem to increase. You might think of children with a school routine, adults with a work routine, maybe the daily or the weekly coffee that you have with family or friends, going out to eat, having a drink. I frequently read or heard such advice during this time. Keep a routine, say psychologists, educators, and others. I even read an article by a POW saying how important it was for him while imprisoned to keep a routine. Don't sleep all day, he said. It's destructive. Ritualized action, a structured plan, seems to enable us to participate in something bigger than ourselves, something that enriches us. Routine, ritual. The third observation is this, that once again we have discovered the value of sacrifice and the unity it creates. Here I'm thinking especially of healthcare professionals, really all those on the front lines, their courageous and selfless acts, which have given rise to those window or balcony cheers when shifts change. Maybe you've seen those on TV. They've occurred across the world. Sacrifice brings people together. It unites them. And this stands out all the more clearly against a backdrop of hoarding toilet paper. How ridiculous that looks or selfish acts by some politicians during this time. Time, ritual, routine, and sacrifice. And do they correspond to your experience and observations? Well, I do think they're widespread experiences. And if so, they would seem then to be a part of being human. Now, look at this. The gospel began with a reference to time before the Feast of Passover. That reference provides the setting and context, which are informed by that event so long recorded in the first reading. And how did that begin? The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. The reckoning of the year 
is not dependent on the sun or the moon or Earth's orbit. Sequential time, regular time, time on Earth is influenced by a different type of time. God was saying that the event of the Passover penetrates into your calendar of days and is the reference point for the whole year. Time is relative to it. Time has meaning in relation to that event. Now, it's a little bit like the foot washing, which Jesus said can only be understood in reference to the future event of his death and resurrection. That event gives the proper meaning to the foot washing. The foot washing was relative to it and could only be understood in light of it. Jesus was washing them in the reference point, which was intended to direct their lives. As I have washed your feet, as I have washed you in my death and resurrection, you ought to wash one another. And what's more for the Jews, to remember God's past actions was to remember God. And to remember God was to remind God or to ask him maybe to call his saving actions to mind. Remember, call to mind in the present time so that those now living could participate in the salvation he brings. Such was how Passover was to be celebrated, saying in the ritual, God brought us out from bondage to freedom from sorrow to gladness. The word us must be used, not them back then. It's not something that happened way back in the past, but it's happening right now with us too. It's in this context that Jesus gave his disciples a structured plan, a routine, a ritual to be performed on an ongoing basis in which he and his sacrifice is remembered is brought into the present so that followers of all times could be united with him and with one another, giving them, giving us the opportunity not to observe from a screen or sleeping as we might, but participate and collaborate with Jesus altogether, which is the meaning of the word proclaim that Paul used when he wrote, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim, you engage in by acting out and announcing the death of the Lord until he comes. Jesus has left us a way of worshiping that corresponds to our humanity, time, ritual, sacrifice, and to the way that God has engaged with human beings in history, time, ritual, sacrifice. Do you see it? Friends, it's for this reason that while no doubt we are all grateful for the technology that allows Mass to be viewed during this stay-at-home time, Catholics in a particular way feel its inadequacies, both on that side of the camera and on this side, even if some on that side like the fast-forward and the mute option occasionally. Let's allow this experience of our poverty, inadequacies, and limitations to engender gratitude in our hearts for what we've been given, as well as to resolve never, ever, ever take for granted the gift of the Eucharist, which we ourselves could never manufacture on our own, but can only receive from the one to whom we now turn. Angelingua gloriosi, corporis mysterium, sanguinisque preziosi, quem in mundi preziun, fructus ventris generosi, rex effudit gentium. Nobis datus, nobis natus, ex intacta virgine, et in mundo conversatus, parso verbis semine, 
Suimora sincolatus miro clausit ordine. Tantum ergo sacramentum venere mucenui. Et anticum documentum novo cedat ritui. Restet fides supplementum sensum defectui. Genitori genitoque laus et jubilatio. Salus honor virtus quoque sit et benedictio. Procedensi abutroque comparsit laudatio. Amen.